Hello to Facebook Live and Twitter Live. I'm Francis Collins, the director of the National Institutes of Health. And I am at NIH, but I'm appropriately distanced from anybody else in the room. So I'm gonna take my double helix mask off and it'll be easier for you to understand me. It was January where I got word that something was happening in China that we might need to pay really close attention to. So much so that our own vaccine research center, recognizing that this could turn into something serious, began work on a vaccine. And as the disease began to spread further, it was clear we had to bring every kind of resource and talent to bear on this. And that has utterly dominated my life. You feel this intense pressure that every day has to count. Every day you have to move things forward. If you make a mistake that costs you a couple of days, that's people's lives. And that drives us all, I think, with the kind of intensity I have not seen in my career. I'm up at 4.30 or 5. That's my time uh, for prayer and reflection to try to get in touch with whatever it is I need to hear from God about where I am and where I need to be. And by 7.30 every morning, there is a, a call of all my senior leadership at NIH to say what's happened in the last 24 hours. At eight o'clock, I have a war room meeting, that's what we call it, which is about coronavirus. And then at 8.30, There's a meeting presided over by my boss, the Secretary of Health and Human Services, where he pulls together all of the parts of the department, FDA and CDC and CMS. Okay, everybody, what's happening today? Uh, where's the latest outbreak uh, in which city and what are we doing about it? We've never had to do anything like this where so many people had to put their lives on hold. And the consequences of that have been profound. I had hoped, maybe for a while, that this kind of national stress would bring us together. I've seen instances of that, but I'm afraid I've seen other instances that seem to have gone the other way. We are humans, and we have this ability, it seems, in every situation uh, to try to create in-groups and out-groups, and I'm afraid that's happening here as well. I don't think we will ever be quite the same again. I think the darkest moment really was in April when this pandemic was hitting New York City with such a vengeance. Uh, I know a lot of the docs and hearing from them just how incredibly exhausted and stressed they were and the decisions they were having to make uh, about allocating resources to hear that bodies are piling up in refrigerated trucks because there's no room left for them. To read about a physician who I knew a little bit, who finally decided to take a short break uh, from her incredible intense efforts in the emergency room and was so completely devastated by the whole thing that she committed suicide. This is the kind of thing you might imagine in some bad Hollywood movie, but it shouldn't be happening in our country, in our world with all of the medical resources and skills and coming on so fast. Those are dark, dark days. I can't say that the ones right now are fabulously better. Day after day, every day, one of the things I do before that 7.30 meeting is to look at all the websites about how many more cases and how many people died. And every one of those numbers is somebody who should still be with us. Second Timothy says, you are not given a spirit of fear, but of power and love and self-control. What gives me hope really is that we can get past that spirit of fear and we can bring the power from all possible sources. And one of them is science. And we can maintain our love for each other even more. And we can have the self-control uh, to take responsibility, each one of us, uh, to try to save lives of less fortunate and vulnerable people. If I have 
really positive moments of feeling like celebration is in order, um, they're usually on the basis of a scientific milestone that's happened. When I first saw the data from the first vaccine trial and looked to see what the level of antibodies were that were generated and saw that they were not only pretty good, they were fabulous. <laughs> and that was a really good day. And all of this happening at a timetable that is unthinkable a few years ago. It feels like I'm in the right place. I wouldn't be doing anything else, I don't think, that would be as meaningful as this right now until we get to the point where we could actually say, I think this could be in our rear view mirror. <laughs> and, and we could actually all plan what we're going to say uh, when asked 10 or 15 years from now, what did you do in 2020? Everybody's going to want to have an answer to that, and we all will.